barnstorming their way into third place at the end of the home and away season. Beautifully ready for a big final series. It was a great finish to the home and away year, Alex. Yeah, it was when we started to gather a bit of momentum and a tiny little blip on the radar down the road. But, um, yeah, it was, it was really good fun to play that style of football. At what stage does the playing group start to really believe that, hold on, we've got a game plan and a group that can do some damage later in the year? It never really got to that. It never really got to that as a backline group. I'm sure the forwards do because they're, you know, yeah, pretty leery and, get, you know, get like happy to... with ourselves. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think we were just happy to put someone else in a better position. I think we saw that Shane Edwards this year, his ability mm. to put someone through a hole mm. and, and make their game better was infectious. And the rest of the forward line wanted to do it. And so you saw a lot of goals ha coming from the goal line. And so that's what made it really fun to play. It's almost like, you know, keepings off. Um, so that back end of the year was really fun to play. I can recall a few years ago, Damien Hardwick publicly said that for us to be a better team, we need Jack Rewalt to kick less goals. That's actually come to fruition, yeah. Richard. Their ability, obviously Alex has talked about the defensive ability of the group, but their ability to kick 100 plus points per game consistently was outstanding this year. Yeah, it was. And I reckon halfway through the year, people were questioning, can Richmond score enough at the business end of the season? And, and they did. On the run home, Rancy he really kicked some big scores and were able to rack up 100 points while the defence was nearly number one in the comp. I think it was number one in the comp. And they just, it was an even spread of goals. You didn't know who was going to kick them. And, and uh, Jack's role in that was huge. Mm. The win against Fremantle probably was a great little confidence booster for mm. us because we'd won games by 20, 30 points. But w when you win by that much, mm. you, you really start to b believe a lot. And, and I think we saw from that game, Jacob Townsend, the amazing story that we had there. So, um, and Jack Graham, another young fella coming in. So that back last four, three games that we had was really important. And the big wins in those last two games, it actually gave you the percentage to get into that third position, which kept you at the MCG in the finals. That was really big. Underestimated how whether if we went over to Adelaide, even if we had a one, you never know what that does to your mindset of yeah. maybe get a little bit too much head wobble and thinking yeah. you might be going a bit better than what you are. But to stay at home, stay consistent, MCG, MCG, and get the support we did from the Tiger supporters. I think we had 95,000 versus GWS mm. in the second final, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, and 3,000 of them were GWS supporters. So that's, that's unbelievable to have that support in a final. Yeah, I think by the time you got to the home and away, into home and away, Richmond supporters, long suffering supporters were just about starting to believe that maybe this year was the year for the famous yellow and black but on a personal note you end the home and away season Dustin Martin no surprise announced as an All-Australian you are again but more importantly you're awarded the esteemed honour of the All-Australian captain this year yeah it's still something that doesn't sit very comfortably with me because Why? well you look at that lineup you've got Joel Selwood, who's probably the greatest or one of the greatest captains of the, of the modern era along, alongside Luke Hodge. You've got Buddy Franklin, Patrick Dangerfield, these amazing stars of the game, Josh Kennedy. And for me, like, I never envisioned myself that I'd ever be uh, an All-Australian once, let alone a captain. So it's, it's pretty humbling. I think you underestimate, mm. though, Rad. So you're All-Australian four years in a row, the only player in that team four years in a row, thoroughly deserved to be yeah, captain. Yeah, he he, well said. Um, I'm keen to get your thoughts. It's a massive build-up. Richmond are back into the finals, and finals in recent years, Richard, haven't been too kind. But as a media commentator and a Tiger great, are you a fan of the bye in the lead-up to the finals? Uh, I, I'm not, no, personally. Um, I just think as a player, you like continuity, and if you're playing well, you want to keep playing well. But I understand the other side of the argument as well, that, uh, you know, it's, it's good rest up and get players fresh for a good final series. But personally, no, but uh, everyone's got their uh, views on that. You're rolling by this stage, Alex. You're really heading towards uh, the month of September really well. So as a playing group, were you happy with the bye at that stage, or would you have liked to have kept playing? I think where we finished in the top eight, we didn't like the buy because I think the buy makes a more well-rounded and fitter top eight. So it means that the dogs can come from seven and, and win it. So when you're finishing the top four, you're probably a bit filthy that the buy is coming around because you've worked so hard the whole year to get that double chance. Why should a team be allowed to have that extra week to freshen up to potentially take us out? Well, the wait was finally over. Richmond into the final series. They hadn't won a final in a number of years. They got the double chance and they take on Geelong in the second qualifying final to begin the 2017 final series. Let's see how the Tigers went against the Cats.